Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the fourth installment of your online orientation Adventure Starts Here webinar series. My name is Anders Groseth, and I have the honor of being the director of the orientation program here at Montana State University. And on behalf of everybody across our campus, I'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight for Academics 102, where you're going to learn how to go through that transition of being a prospective student to enrolling in classes and becoming that current student at Montana State. Before we get into the, this evening's presentation, I want to make a couple of uh, comments just to make sure that you get the most out of the presentation. The first things first, we're going to have a live chat feature running throughout the evening. This chat feature is going to allow students to write in questions about anything that's covered in the presentation and get a response right away. Now, you do need to log into your YouTube account to utilize this chat feature. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, be sure to tune in just as soon as you can, and then you can throw your questions our way. Now, we have our admissions staff monitoring that chat feature throughout the evening. These admissions counselors are going to be answer questions in live time that you may throw our way, and they'll be able to provide links for further information regarding some of the questions that you ask. At the end of this evening's presentation, we're also going to do a live Q&A with the presenters for Academics 102. We're going to choose some of the most popular questions that have come up in that chat feature throughout the evening, and we'll be able to ask our presenters point blank about some of the things that you're most interested in. And then lastly, this evening's uh, webinar is going to be recorded and it's going to be available for future viewing. It's going to be available on our orientation confirmation page. Students, it's going to be built into your online orientation D2L class. And then it's also going to be available on the MSU Admissions YouTube channels as well. So with that, the stage is set, and so I want to introduce this evening's presenters. Our, this evening, we have two of my favorite people at Montana State University who are dedicated to the academic security and success of our students. We have our Associate Vice President of Enrollment, Tony Campau, and we have the, our university's registrar, Candy Gresswell, and they're going to walk you through all the step, steps of course registration and becoming familiar with our online services as a current student. So with that, I'll get out of the way, and I'm going to hand it over to Tony Campbell. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Anders, uh, and welcome, everybody. It is great to be here, uh, great to be sharing this time with you. Uh, it is, it is an exciting time for all of us. You know, we talk in the registrar's office, two of our favorite times of the year are orientation and then commencement. And what we want to do is we want to help you get from becoming a Bobcat to becoming an alumni. And what happened is you probably have realized most of you have probably received an email from Rhonda Russell, uh, or you have contacted the Office of Admissions, uh, whether you were seeking information on housing or whether you were seeking information on inter, uh, uh, extracurricular activities or co-curricular activities or varsity athletics, whatever it might be, you knew that if you had a question about MSU, that you could go straight to the Office of Admissions. And they, if they didn't already have the answer, they knew exactly where to get you that answer. Well, what happens after this week, once you are registered for classes, instead of going to the Office of Admissions, you can come to the Office of the Registrar. And when you come to the Office of the Registrar, it will be the same environment where when you have a question, and you're not sure where else to go, you come to the office of the registrar, and our job, just like admissions, has helped you solve all of the problems and overcome the hurdles and answer all the questions to get you to be an MSU student, a Bobcat. We're here to now help you until four years from now when you're walking across the stage receiving your diploma and we're shaking your hand and handing you your, your diploma cover. That's what we're here to help you do. We know there are going to be challenges um, and at MSU, we have kept the, ch the, the bar is set high. But what it is, is the bar is set high, and we're here to help, to help you learn how to get over those challenges. And then that's what makes you an employable alum once, you're, once you graduate. So that's what we're here to do. So from now, from this point forward, from the day you register forward, uh, know that we in the registrar's office, we're your people. Um, and we're here to help you get across that stage and receive that diploma. What we want to do today is show you a few things about the registration process. And uh, before we dive into that, I want to look at 
a couple of resources here on the website. And I know you're all familiar with the website. You've looked through it some. You've logged into my info to, in order to register for, uh, uh, for orientation. But there are a couple of things that I want to show you. And one of them really has to, if you come to academics and you go to the course catalog, this is really our contract, our academic contract with you. What does it take to get a degree from Montana State University? Any question related to what it takes to get a degree from Montana State University is generally addressed, if not answered, in the course catalog. And whether it's all of the, uh, the programs that there are and what, you, what it takes to, uh, what classes you need to take to get a program, uh, whether it's the general education requirements, core 2.0, one of the things I want to point out, or whether it's the code of conduct, policies and regulations, but this link right here, curriculum, enrollment, and graduation. This link right here is one, I recommend that people bookmark this and read it whenever you have insomnia. It's not a great read, it's not an exciting read, but it is full of information. Whether you're talking about registering for classes, take, uh, taking your examinations, how do your credits convert into grades? How, what does it take to make the dean's list or the president's list if you need to appeal a grade or find out why you're not on the president's list? If there's an academic standing issue and you're wondering why maybe you're on probation or why you're on the de dean's list. All of that in this curriculum, enrollment, and graduation. And my recommendation is read it once. Read it once as a freshman and then as you go through when it, when it becomes time and you do have a question, you'll remember, oh yeah, I remember reading that, you can go back, you look it up, and you're good to go. So I recommend bookmarking, know that it's right off the homepage, academics, and then course catalog. So I wanted to point that out to you. And the other thing that I want to point out is that as you walk through the website, whoops, the number lock is where the backspace is supposed to be. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. How about if I just do this? There we go. All right. We'll go to the registrar's homepage. Um, go to the registrar's homepage, the office of the registrar. Here again, some very important information. And what I want to point out here is that we make this dynamic. We make it so that the most important stuff is at the top. As we've gone through, uh, the outbreak of COVID and the adjustments we've made to how we teach and when we teach, all of those came up to the top in your quick links. And so as new important information is that, that has to do with you attending class and being successful in class, that'll be right at the top of our webpage. Also over on the side then, you can see that from here is that staff when we talk about we are your people. These are the people that will answer the questions that help you get across the stage. As you go on through this, the, other, the one other thing I want to point out is when, you, when it comes time to graduate, all of these questions, whether it's from registration all the way through to graduation, are available right here on the website for you. But what we really want to talk about today is registering for classes and what tools are available to help you register for classes, because that's ultimately what you're here to do. And to walk through that, if you identify as a student, and that'll change the, your, uh, your homepage, and then as you look across the top of the homepage, you have your email, and I wanna point out that email is something, if we send you an email to your preferred email address, it'll default to a montana.edu address. But if you wanna change that to Gmail or a Hotmail or you know, if you're old enough, an AOL account, um, we will, we'll, you can go ahead and mark that as your preferred email, but if we send something to your preferred email, we consider that as an official communication to you, you're responsible for the content of those emails. D2L, Desire to Learn, Brightspace, this second link, link is where all of your online learning and your supplemental learning to your face-to-face -face instruction will occur. So you can click on D2L when you want to log into a class, see the syllabus, submit an assignment, answer some questions, or if you have an online class, it's probably offered exclusively through D2L. My info is really great though. What that does is it takes the general information from the university and your specific personally identifiable information and combines it. So when you go to my info, before you log in, you'll see a series of links. 
Um, and uh, you can, we already looked at the course catalog. You can get to the course catalog from, he, from here because that's ultimately important. Uh, and then the other thing that I want to point out here is the schedule of classes. This is where you go to see all of the different classes that are offered each semester. Um, and when you click on schedule classes, you simply pick the term. We're looking at the fall of 2020. And most students are either going to take a writing or a U.S. course, so let's look at writing. And when we search all writing sections, as a matter of fact, we know that we're going to be doing writing 101. So when we search all of the writing 101 classes, what you can see is there's writing 101, but it's offered at so many different times, all of these different sections, all of these different times and locations that you can take writing 101. When you go to pick one, you'll see that some are offered Tuesday, Thursday. Some are offered Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, you can see what room they're offered in. You can see how many seats are available in that class. But what's ultimately important here is that you pay attention to the CRN. Just like each student has a university ID that helps us identify, and each staff member has a university ID that helps us identify the individual, each section of every course has a unique CRN. So oftentimes, when you're navigating this process, you'll be asked, what's the CRN, the course request number, of the course you want to take? And where you find CRN is in the schedule of classes. So that's a little bit about the schedule of classes. That's a little bit about logging in. Um, and then what you can do is, when you go to go ahead and log in, when you click log in, it'll take you to a form like this. You log in. And so here I've logged in, I think, as one of my favorite uh, students, Champ the Bobcat. And what happens is, is I, I logged in and then I selected uh, Degree Works. And uh, when you are on the, when you log in, uh, first it'll take you to Student Services, and then from Student Services you log into Degree Works. It's the top link on the Student Services tab. And what Degree Works does is it takes all of your personal information and then applies it to whatever curriculum you're in. So CHAMP, for example, is in the College of Business, studying business finance. CHAMP's advisor is uh, Candy Gresswell, our registrar. CHAMP is a freshman. When you're getting ready to register for classes, you can click on placement data. And you can see Champ killed it when he took the ACT, 30, 30, 28, 30. Uh, he did a great job there. And then down below are all of the different requirements it takes to get a degree in business. And so each one of these requirements is spelled out. So to get, a, to get through the pre-business curriculum, these are all the classes that are needed. And then what happens is you want to change these red boxes into green checks that indicates it's complete. And so you can see that Champ needs to take a seminar or business in entrepreneurship fundamentals. To find out what that is, you can just hover over that, see what the title is. You can click on it. It pulls up a complete course description as well as all the different days and times that that course is offered. All of this available right to you from your DegreeWorks account. You can also see all students need to complete Core 2.0, or our general education requirements. Champ has already completed math through West High. Already, because of his excellent writing scores, uh, Champ's uh, writing requirement is waived. You can see here this blue tilde, or this blue squiggly down here, is something that's in progress. So here you can see that uh, Champ is registered for an intro to psychology in the fall of 2020. So you should be checking degree works probably three times a semester. Um, early in the semester, just before you go have your academic advising appointment, so you can decide, you can take a look at what classes you think you should take before you go talk to your advisor. And then at the end of the semester to make sure that all of your grades posted right and that everything looks as you think it should. If you ever see something on degree works that doesn't look like you think it should, please come see us in the office of the registrar. We want, to, we want this to be an accurate depiction, not just of when you graduate, but of your progress towards degree. 
The one exception that I'll share with you is that as incoming freshmen, sometimes it takes a little while for your ACT classes to post or for incoming transfer credit to post. So if you have ACT or incoming transfer credit that has it that you don't see on here, please talk to your advisor about that and realize that we should have it posted uh, shortly after fall semester starts. Two last things I wanna show you quickly. One is the what if. So what'll happen is about 50% of you are going to change your major or add a minor before you graduate. And when you do, you can come over here and you can see right now, Champ is majoring in business. But Champ could say, what if instead of business, I wanted to study biological sciences? Click on process what if, it goes out there, it does its recalculating, takes all of your credentials, takes all of Champ's credentials, reapplies them to a bachelor's of science in biology. And you can see that those same classes apply, still enrolled in the same classes, but all of the other uh, classes have changed to line up with the biology degree. So you have that what if capability to see what it would take if you wanted to add a minor in Spanish, or if you wanted to add, uh, add a minor in entrepreneurship, or you ultimately wanted to change your major, you can see how that'll affect your progress towards degree right here in DegreeWorks. The other thing that's gonna happen, and this is new, this is a, and this is special to Montana State University. There is a Complete College America initiative out there, and the Complete College America initiative says that one of the things that really helps students is if they can see what classes they should take each semester that leads towards degree. And so we at Montana State University were early adopters and we articulated all of our four-year degree programs and in eight semesters, so if you did fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring, uh, you'd be done in eight semesters. But then what we've done is we know that people come in at different levels of math preparedness. So we have loaded for you, by the time you're gonna meet with your advisor, we will have loaded for you a plan that is specific to you based on your degree choice and your math placement. And with your degree choice and your math placement, you can see, and I don't have the specific one for CHAMP here, but let me open up one randomly. And what you'll see is that fall, spring, so CHAMP in this uh, plan needs to take chemistry 194, needs to take math 121, needs to take a series of core classes. And so Champ gets to choose which core class, but that goes through four years and the classes that need to be taken each of those four years. So it's spelled out. And then what you can do is when you want to modify that, because we understand we don't expect any two of you to take the exact same classes the exact same semester all the way through to completion. Some of you are going to be involved in student government. Some of you are going to be involved with Engineers Without Borders. Some of you are varsity athletes. All of that is going to lead to slight modifications of your plan. When you want to modify your plan, you can come in, you can click Edit. It changes the way the plan is displayed. And then you can open up any given semester and you can see the same things we saw before in a slightly different format. So chemistry is still here, math is still here, uh, the, the architecture 121 is still here, and all of the core classes. Now when it comes to these core classes, what you can do is you can come over here and say choose a class. Let's say that you know your uh, you know that in your, in your bachelor's, in your pre-business requirements, uh, well, this is a little confusing because I have a chemistry plan opened, but, I have, but I, I'm still a business major. So bear with me as I go through this. But it'll list all of the classes you need over here. And when you see the class you want to take, you can just take it, grab it, drop it in, and then it adds uh, that class right there. If you want to... Um, You want to move through this, you move through this, you add the classes you want, you delete the classes you want, um, and then you take this to your advisor 
share it with your advisor, your advisor approves it, they lock and activate it, and when they lock and activate your plan, it'll go straight into CAT course that allows you to see all of the different versions of all of the different courses and pick your favorite schedule. So the plan is something you can have multiple plans. You can have the ones that you're working on yourself and then the one that you share with your advisor. But whichever plan was most recently locked and activated by your advisor is the one that's going to pull into CAT course. And CAT course is how you actually register for the classes you want to take the next semester. And Candy Gresswell, our university registrar, is going to walk you through the actual registration process right now. Thanks, Tony. <clears throat> hey, Bobcats. Um, so my job tonight is to show you how to register. Um, and just a reminder that there's all different kinds of tools for you to use here at Montana State. DegreeWorks is going to help you track your progress toward degree and plan for that progress toward degree. And then CAT course is how you actually register. It's in your My Info under the Student Services tab. You'll click on Registration and then CAT course. For this demonstration, I'm gonna log in as myself and show you how to register using guest mode in CAT course. Give me one second to log in here. All right. So once you're in CAT course, make sure that you select the fall 2020 semester. And this is what CAT course looks like. CAT course is a tool that gives you every single option, essentially, of every class that you wanna take and accounts for any time that you're unavailable. So if you know that you're gonna have a part-time job, you're going to take advantage of tutoring, or you just wanna make sure you have a healthy school life balance, you can add a break and CAT course will make sure to exclude any options. So Champ here has study break from eight to 11 on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So he's unavailable at that time. And then you simply add courses. There's three different ways. By subject includes every course in our course catalog. By core category limits uh, courses that have core attributes. And then degree works when your advisor locks and activates your plan, that plan and those specific courses that you need to take for that semester populate right here so you don't even have to look for them. But for demonstration's sake, we are going to add a chemistry class, Chem 141. We are going to add activities class. Let's see. Soccer is usually the favorite when we do these in person. And we know that we need an inquiry to arts course. And so let's add education. So essentially you'll notice that it's forced choice. If you know what the course code is, so AGBE is Agricultural Business and Econ, uh, BIOB, General Biology. If you know what the course code is, CAT course is gonna show you every class under that rubric. Once you're finished adding classes, you can save and close, and you've got two different queues here. You've got your courses and your breaks. You'll notice that there's color coding associated with some of the classes, and essentially we want you to pay attention because there's probably some information in here you wanna know. So you're prompted, click options for section specific information. And you'll notice that there's course notes associated with this class. So it meets on the turf field, which is important information that you're gonna wanna know. There's also information such as additional fees that may be required for taking the class. So you'll see here, fees are associated with chemistry. And there's information that's also handy for registering. This is a lecture section, you need a lab to go with it. So let's go back. 
So make sure you're paying attention. If there's color coding, there's probably something you want to know about the class. Also, just a reminder, if you click the information icon, you'll get the course description, how many credits the course is worth, um, and the course title. When you're ready to generate schedules, you click Generate Schedules. And you'll see here we have 39 potential options. The first thing you want to do is shuffle your schedule so that you're not watching the same course bounce around. And then you can view what a potential week would look like should you choose this schedule. So you'll see here my study break is accounted for. I don't have class until 11 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's a pretty bomb schedule. Is bomb still cool? No, it's a rocking schedule. <laughs> also, I want to point out with some of our activities classes, for example, snowboarding or soccer or usually activities that are happening outside, you'll notice here this is a week-by-week -week view of your potential schedule. Soccer ends 10 weeks into the fall semester because here is generally where snow happens. So keep in mind if you're registering for snowboarding, tennis, soccer, um, that it's probably shortened throughout the semester. And to get a good idea of what your schedule look like, you can go week by week. Now when you're ready to register, you've chosen your schedule you click, there's a button instead of registration instructions, it's send to registration cart. And here's where I need you all to pay very close attention. Your advisor is going to give you an advising pin, which is a special code essentially that gives you permission to register for classes. You will be prompted to enter that code and then you must click register. Send to registration cart and register are two different steps. If you don't click register, you are not registered. Um, in every orientation, we have students who go through the content, prepare a schedule, and don't click register. If at any time you need help registering, contact the registrar's office, and we can talk you through the process. And with that, we're going to give it back to uh, Anders. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, thank you. Thank you both. Um, we do have some time for, for some questions that have come in throughout the evening. We just got a handful of them, um, but there's some good ones, really. One of, the, um, one of the things that you just mentioned right at the very end, but this is a question that just came in as well. Who can students contact if they're having trouble getting into the courses that they've discussed with their advisors? Got it. So there's a few different strategies here. If the course is closed, we need you to work with the department. The department controls the capacity in the classrooms, but you can always contact the registrar's office and we can be a liaison between you and the department. Um, and we can also advise you on who's the best person to contact or if we have some insider information that some uh, spots might be opening, we can facilitate those conversations for you. Um, but we are going to help you partner with the department for that. Cool. Thank you. Um, let's see. Starting from the top here, am I required to build an academic plan in DegreeWorks before registering for classes? No. Um, you're not required. You can, you can go straight to CAT course. You can select all the courses you want in CAT course and register that way. Uh, but the plan is already pre-built for you. So uh, the recommendation is, is that you use that plan and then you know, copy paste that and modify it each semester going forward so you can track your progress and plan more than one semester out. But it is not, it is not required, it's not mandatory. If you were to hear from our president, our president, one of the things that she always likes saying is that she can't wait to have you here, but in four years, she really does want you to leave. And those plans will kind of help <laughs> keep you on that four-year graduation pace, so. Um, this is a good one, always seems to come up. What is the typical amount of time you should spend studying for a course outside of the classroom? So there's, there's a formula that, that, that we talk about. And essentially, it is for every hour in a lecture classroom, you need to spend two hours outside of class. And you've probably heard 15 to finish, or the freshman 15, or 15 credits, essentially what that is, is 15 credits a semester 
will allow you to graduate in eight semesters in most curriculum, but at least 15 credits a semester. And a credit is one hour inside of the classroom per week for a lecture class, two or three hours for a lab. And for every hour in class, you should spend two outside of class. So 15, 15 hours in class, 30 credits studying, that's 45 hours a week, that's full time. So when you're taking those classes and you're thinking about having a job or being involved in, in extracurricular activities, do plan on, for every credit, about three hours a week. Um, one hour in class, two hours of studying. And one of the things that's, uh, that's really nice about Montana State University is that we utilize flat rate tuition or we utilize a flat spot. And so that, that four year graduation path will have you at 15 credits, but students actually kind of hit their, their ceiling in regards to tuition payments at 12 credits once you reach full time status. So um, it, it's just sort of a nice uh, benefit. So those students. next credits are free. Yeah. So everyone yeah. pays Thank more you. up to 12 credits <laughs> than from 12 to 15 or 15 to 17, those credits are free. So it's a it's a it's two year advantage to take a full load of classes each semester, both in time to degree and in cost per credit. Um, what happens if I try to register for my required courses, but they're full? Will I be off track for four year graduation? Two two thoughts on that. Sorry to and jump no, in, Candy. But two thoughts on that. One is come talk to us um, if. If you need a class to be on track and on time to graduate, we will find a way to get you that class. Generally, as a freshman, there's some, there are some things we can do with swapping to say, well, instead of taking that in the fall, you can take that in the spring and you'll be fine. But there are some classes that are very specific to the, they're a prerequisite for subsequent terms. And if you have a class that is a prerequisite that's really setting the stage for your success, we will guarantee that you get that class when you need it if you come tell us before the semester starts. So you need to come talk to us. Uh, David Single, our associate provost, is the person we'd elevate that to. But you, we will offer you all the classes you need to be on track and on time for graduation. And then I would just echo also that that's why it's so important to reference the plan that's in your degree works is that a content area expert in your major has outlined exactly which classes you should take when to make sure you're not setting yourself up for a bottleneck by not taking the classes that you need at the appropriate time. So just a reminder that someone has already laid out the order. The order can be adjusted, um, but you're gonna wanna talk with your advisor. You're gonna wanna communicate with the registrar's office. Cool. Uh, th this one is also a really popular question with students coming in. Am I allowed to pursue a double major as a freshman? How do I set this up in my schedule? Yes, you are. Um, you, I, I would recommend that you get one semester of school under your belt. Um, First, but you can, and you do this by utilizing a curriculum change. Um, coming to the registrar's office or emailing us, we'll connect you with the department. You'll have a conversation with your second major advisor. We update your student account and your degree works follows. Um, but I, I would talk with an advisor before doing that. Much of your first courses are introductory, and so it's a good idea to get a semester under your belt before changing anything. Do you have oh. similar? The one thing that I would mention is that when it's time to do that, uh, you can declare that second major or that second degree or after uh, school starts in the fall. So even though you could prepare and maybe if you wanted to take a minor in Spanish, you'd add, you would add a Spanish class, you wouldn't actually declare that additional credential until uh, you get here in the fall uh, and you would do that at the office of the registrar. Perfect. <clears throat> Great, uh, lead into this next question. Where is Montana Hall located on campus? Right in the center of campus, and it has a steeple on it. <laughs> it has a, uh, here it's it is. It's that one. That guy. It's, this, right it's this one right here. You can't miss it. Right, right in the middle of campus. <laughs> Not to scale. Yeah. <laughs> um, do I always have to meet, this actually goes back to what you were saying about have those conversations mm. with advisors. Do I always have to meet with an advisor before I can register? You sure do. 
And we don't do that to be difficult. We do that to make sure that you're on track. If there's any additional issues that your advisor can connect you with resources, we want to make sure that you have that face time. And then at Montana State, every semester we require um, an alternate pin or advising pin to give you access to register. And so you want to be thinking of the classes that you want to take. You want to be thinking of the different opportunities you want to take advantage of. Have those conversations with your advisor, they'll give you the pin, you go ahead and register. Cool. Uh, this, is a, this could be a varied answer. How do I sign up for the same schedule as my roommate? Two, two thoughts on that. One, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think that it, from personal experience, I moved to college with a buddy of mine from high school. We were in the same major. We had many of the same classes. Um, it was great. Uh, until towards final or midterms and we started, you know, the, our stress was building and the fact that we were seeing each other so much, I, I, there's a story that I'm not sure is appropriate for this, <laughs> for this audience, but, but it, ended, it ended with uh, me, you know, we, we had a huge debate, we're both studying political science, we had a huge debate over whether or not uh, uh, there's presidential candidates should be supported by the government to take money out of politics. And it got so heated, it ended with me like, seriously, you know, to you, and like storming out of the room. So, and then the, the other big de the debate that we got into was whether or not the Heath bar was better chilled or at room temperature. <laughs> um, and, and anyway, so it, it, can lead, it can lead to some extra tension. The other thing is, is that part of what you want to do is, uh, part of going to schools, you want to open doors that you didn't even know existed yet. And if you and your roommate have slightly different schedules, what that does is it allows you to bring something back to, to the conversation and to talk about what you're learning in your classes and maybe what he or she is learning in their classes. And when you have those conversations, it really broadens the experience for both of you. So I'd be, I'd be hesitant to, to try to get the same schedule as any one person. Okay. Um, there's just two more questions. When is my first tuition bill generated after I register? Mm. Bills will be generated, as I recall, it's, it's, I think it's the second week of July uh, that bills will be generated. And then there is a due date that is in early August, as I recall. You, pay, you, you need to pay by early August to hold your classes or you end up paying a $30 late fee. So once that, once that bill's generated, you have about a month to pay it and then you want to pay it in that first part of August. Yep. Uh, for, for those who wrote that question in, um, this Thursday, the evening webinar is going to be paying for school. And we have the Office of Financial Aid, Office of Financial Education, and our Student Accounts Office. Uh, there's representatives from each of those three that'll talk about that entire process of when the bills are generated, the payment dates, the payment plans, everything. So be sure to tune into that. So, um, and then this is the last question. Is there any way to tell if the class that I've registered for is online? Yes. Let me show you, actually, if okay, that's okay. Cool. Remember, in the beginning, Tony show, showed us the schedule of classes in my info. And let's go to, what's a good one, writing? Yeah. So we're looking at all of our writing. And... Let me find an online one to show you the difference. Dun, dun, dun. What's the Jeopardy music? Yeah. Here we go. So anything with a section 80 something nice. is online. Also, you can see here that internet online is highlighted in red. Okay. Um, there are different delivery methods of courses. There's face-to-face, -face, blended, and online. Um, and they're all just a little bit different, but you can find delivery mode in both CAT course and my info. Perfect. Uh, I was just sent a note for um, going back to that bill payment date. Uh, August 7th is the date that you need to have confirmed your bill by in order to avoid that late fee for all students that have registered before the 31st of July. So August 7th is going to be that date. So, Okay, my very last question. Chilled or room temperature? 
Oh, so we had that. We had that was that that debate happened in uh, fall semester of our freshman year. I came back spring semester of our freshman year, and if you go to a score bar and if you lift the little flap on the back, it says "Taste Great Chilled." And I was arguing that it was better at room temperature because you got the chocolate in your mouth and it was so much better. Well, to the to the mirror in our room, the flap was lifted and it was taped. That <laughs> score themselves says that it tastes great ah. chilled. So, okay. yeah. A learning experience, a learning <laughs> opportunity. Well, thank you both. Thank you both for spending this evening with us. And thanks for everybody who's tuning in and writing in your questions. Um, as you can see, th this, uh, this transition that Tony was talking about, um, the registrar's office are your people. They're here for you. They want to make sure that the foundation of your academic experience at Montana State University is one that's solid and can be built upon. Um, I've worked with these folks long enough to know that they are in your corner. And so any struggles that you're having in terms of getting classes, finding classes, classes, and then down the line, when you go to do this process again and register for your spring semester courses, uh, they're going to be there to help you out, so never hesitate to reach out to their office. So again, thank you all for, for tuning in this evening. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. We're here to help throughout the rest of your online orientation experience, and uh, I hope it's going well. Go Cats!